Welcome back to The Zest. Here we have my next guest, Abby Zorzi. Abby knows firsthand just how powerful addiction can truly be. She's a senior psychology student at St. Vincent College and she recently celebrated her three year sober anniversary. Welcome Abby, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. So this is, I'm excited to talk about this topic because I think that in a, for a lot of people it's taboo or they don't know someone maybe that's ever been addicted to something or they just see crime and what's on TV and they don't actually have that connection and I think I'm really grateful that you're here sharing you know, your story and your journey. So tell us a little bit about what it was like, like how you got to that, that place. Um, you know, I started drinking in high school, like pretty much everybody kind of does. Mm -hmm. And um, I kind of took it to like an extreme, like I couldn't stop once mm -hmm. I started. Mm -hmm. I drank a lot more than my friends were drinking. Um, more frequently, and then it kind of progressed to other drugs like marijuana, cocaine, just anything I could get my hands on, basically. And then my sophomore year of high school, I had my wisdom teeth out, and I got prescribed narcotics, Vicodin, and people I was hanging around at the time said that I could get high from taking them, and, you know, so I started taking maybe instead of one I'd take two mm -hmm. and that's kind of how you know I got addicted to prescription pain medication and I got prescribed a lot of them I don't know why it was just my wisdom teeth but I got prescribed like two bottles of wow. Vicodin so you know once I ran out of those I started buying them on the street stronger pain medication mm -hmm. and then I got addicted to heroin mm -hmm. and what what is it that I'm always curious that transition of when you're in that place of, you know, we think, oh, prescription drugs, this is something my doctor's giving me, it's mm -hmm. okay. What was the turning point from that to going to heroin? Um, I think like my thought process at the time, whenever I was taking them, mm -hmm. you know, the, the medication, mm -hmm. I was like, it is from a doctor, so I'm not at, you know, even when I was buying them on the street, I was like, oh, well, doctor prescribes them to somebody, so mm -hmm. it's not that big of a deal. Um, Which, unfortunately, is what a lot of people think. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot, you know, from people, other people in recovery, that's what I hear, too. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what they thought at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, it got really expensive. Pills are very expensive on the street. And a few people I knew said, you know, heroin's power, more powerful. It'll give you a better high, and it's a lot cheaper. Mm -hmm. And so I was, like, hesitant at first. I was very hesitant because heroin, like, I was, like, you know, I heard bad things about it. And mm -hmm. I remember in school, like hearing bad things about heroin. And I was just so sick. I was going through withdrawal at the time. And I just, you know, I took it. And mm -hmm. after, you know, a few uses, I was doing it, you know, sniffing it. And then probably a week or two after doing that, I was injecting it and I couldn't stop. Mm -hmm. Wow. And how long did that go on? Like, what was the timeline? Um, it's like all blur, you yeah, know, really, sure. but I think, you know, about two years I was doing mm -hmm. that on, you know, between the pills and that, um, and yeah, did it was people about two know? years. Were people, or were you able to hide it? Because I hear both, like I hear mm -hmm. some people, you see it right away, some yeah. people you can. I mean, my, my parents, I was living at college, but when I came home for the summer, you know, they so you were doing this at college. Yeah, um, I was doing the heroin at school, wow, but okay. before that, I was in high school and I was doing the pills. And my parents had no clue. You know, until mm -hmm. I went off to college and I came home and they saw like a major difference in my appearance and how I acted. Just, mm -hmm. you know, they they had an idea something was mm -hmm. wrong. So it took them, you know, a little bit longer. But once they once I was using heroin, it didn't take long for them to figure that out. Mm -hmm. And so when did you decide to, were you like, this is, this is it? Like, what was the point where you decided to get sober? Um, you know, I was kicked out um, of my house. I didn't, uh, I was stealing from everybody and anybody, you know, I came into contact with. I mean, just doing horrible things because I felt like, you know, when you're addicted to heroin, it's like you are using against your will. And like people are like, what does that mean? It's like, you don't want to use, but like you have to. After a while, you're just using to get out of bed in the morning. Mm -hmm. It's not to get high anymore because you're so physically addicted to it. Mm -hmm. um, 
but I mean, my parents, I lived there most of the summer after my freshman year of, high, or of college and they were like, I was still in everything and just, they couldn't live their lives. It was just a mess and they kicked me out. And, you know, I was homeless for about a month or two, just bouncing around from couch to couch, anybody who would take me mm -hmm. basically. And they said, if you wanna go into treatment, you can give us a call, but other than that, we, we, can't, we can't talk to you. So I was like, whoa, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it was just like a scary moment. I was like all alone. And um, yeah, I decided like after a month or two of being, you know, out in the streets, I was like, I wanna go to rehab. And I called my mom and told her and I went into rehab. Mm -hmm. And you've been sober since? Yeah, I've been clean since that time I went into rehab August 16th of 2013 or 15th, something like that, mm -hmm. but it was in 2013. And then how was that, what, what do you think was the, um, a few things in rehab that really helped you specifically? I know it's different for everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, I personally, I um, don't drink and I haven't drank, I've been sober for six years. Mm -hmm. And so my journey is very different than yours, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And so what for you was, the, was some of the biggest um, lessons or the things that really helped you? Yeah, um, I think, you know, a lot of people I was 19 when I went into rehab and they were like, you're young, like, and I was in there with like people that were 40s, 50s, even 60s and 70s, mm -hmm. um, and they've wasted their whole life, you know, and they were, a few of them like pulled me aside and were like, you need, you know, you have your whole life ahead of you, like, get this now. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, it takes a few times going to rehab and stuff, like, usually people don't get it on the first try, but mm -hmm. like, I was just so done and so sick of living the way I was living. I couldn't look at myself in the mirror. I, I just hated myself every moment of every day and going into rehab and like the counselors and everybody, like even the people I was in rehab with, like it was just like we had this instant connection and bond mm -hmm. like cause we had like this similar pain that we were all going through. Mm -hmm. And you know, they just kind of told me like you know, when you get out of here, I was in there for a month. I got out and they set me up with an outpatient program. I went there every day for or five days a week, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Like it was like going to work or mm -hmm. school or something, you know. Mm -hmm. So I did that for a few months and I went to Narcotics Anonymous meetings or AA meetings and I continue to do that today because that's just like where my support is. Mm -hmm. where they're like my family. So mm -hmm. it's like, you know, that's where I go today to like get my medicine for my addiction. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. So, and I know that you are continuing along this path and now you're back at school, mm -hmm. helping yeah. to teach others and help others go through this, correct? Yeah. That's awesome, mm -hmm. great. And what do you, what's, I guess, what's your big dream? Like, what would you hope? Um, Cause I know you do a lot of speaking and you mm -hmm. talk a lot about this, which is great to help empower people not to start in the first place or to get mm -hmm. the treatment they need. So what's your big hope? Like, I mean, before I, was using, I was like, I had really no idea what I wanted to do with mm -hmm. my life. I had no, I knew I wanted to go to college, but I had no clue what I wanted to take. Like my freshman year, I just took like, you know, just the credits that I needed to take. I mm -hmm. didn't declare a major or anything. Like I just had no clue. And then like when I went through this, um, I don't know, like a lot of my counselors inspired me. Like, you know, we need people like me and other people like me um, to help with this epidemic because it is an epidemic. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just feel like I love talking to other people in recovery. I love talking to people that are struggling, like just giving them, giving them hope mm -hmm. that like they can get through it too. Because like I always say, like if I can get clean, like anybody can. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I hope to work in a rehab or, you know, get my master's in counseling or something on that line. I just know that I really want to work with people that have, are going through what I've gone through. Mm -hmm. And I know that like, no matter, you know, what happens that like I could maybe possibly like flip that switch, like to change their mind, to go down a better path. It's not going to happen to every single person I talk to, but like, at least like I can be like maybe the first person they ever you know, see that is mm -hmm. in recovery or have that hope. Mm -hmm. Especially because you have been there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what people will they'll be able to relate to that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is so great. I'm so glad that you're doing this and I appreciate you 
coming on today and sharing your story with us. Yeah. So thank you. No problem. Abby is continuing her research in addiction incubator 143 in tandem with the Fred Rogers Center. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction, I encourage you to seek out help, uh, the help that you need. And for local residents, Abby recommends Gateway Rehabilita Rehabilitation Center, and you can find them at gatewayrehab.org.